This is the will of my Father, says the Lord, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life. This is Father Greg Hiley coming to you again with a word of hope from Aquinas Institute of Theology in St. Louis, Missouri. On November 2nd, the Feast of All Souls, a day on which we pray for and with our beloved dead. It makes me wonder, what is death really? I remember attending a parish retreat in which a colleague preached about death using the image of childbirth. And she said that death is a birth pang of producing something new, something bigger of life. She talked about in the pains of childbirth, how the cervix keeps thinning and thinning and thinning until it's saran wrap thin so that it may allow the passage of new life. In, in, in the midst of all the pain, new life. Isn't death something like that? Today, we, of course, on this feast, are not only praying for our beloved dead, whom we have known and with whom we've lived. We pray also for the dead out at the peripheries of our experience, and especially, I think, we all are praying for those who are suffering brutal separation and death in the Holy Land. We go out to the edges of our experience to the Holy Land and bring this immense trauma and suffering to the center of our attention in prayer and in fasting. We long as a human family that Jesus may bring peace. We're not praying here simply for our Christian family members and neighbors and friends. We are praying for all of humanity that its suffering may be received into God's heart and be made new. We pray that all of humanity may go down into the death of Jesus and be raised up to new possibility here and in the world beyond. The veil that separates us, my friends, is so Thin. The veil that separates us from our brothers and sisters in the Holy Land, the veil that separates us from our beloved dead. On this day of longing, lament, and hope, we pray for those who have died.